So the cinematography has to be at the service of the story and of the imagery, not and not just self-consciously itself. <laughs> Cinematography is the act of capturing photographic images in space through the use of a number of controllable elements. Most importantly though, according to Michael Chapman, is that the cinematography has to be first and foremost at the service of the story and imagery. Michael Chapman began his life in the film business working for his father-in-law who happened to be cinematographer Joe Brum. Upon discovering his love of cinema and the frame, Chapman devoted his life to film after achieving some notoriety, most notably as a camera operator on Steven Spielberg's Jaws. Chapman made a name for himself with his work on Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. It is Taxi Driver and Scorsese's 1980 hit film Raging Bull that we will compare, contrast and examine Chapman's cinematography and its influence in these films. Taxi Driver's influence on so many filmmakers is well known, but one key aspect is the film's low budget. Shot for relatively little compared to today's standards, Chapman's cinematic decisions are influenced by this but also the script. Everything has natural lighting to it. The streets of New York come alive in a way never seen before. Although the scenes are clearly scripted, Chapman documents a real warts and all New York, one that at times is too much for the camera to take in. It was important for Chapman to shoot Taxi Driver star Robert De Niro with the most minimal documentary style lighting to the smallest exposure or angle of light to make it more or less equal with the street light. This way, the feel of Taxi Driver is very real. Low down look at the main character Travis Bickle, a low life with a massive hatred of his world and his longing to cleanse it. Taxi Driver's camera has a kind of enclosed, rigid nature to its framing and shooting. Chapman utilizes the camera this way to create an anxious feeling throughout the film. Along with Travis, we feel a constant possible danger, his paranoia. A sequence that is repeated throughout is with Travis looking at the world in his rear view mirror. He studies the world and his passengers through it, a way of keeping himself separated from the world, furthering his loneliness and paranoia. The famous water shot in the film showcases just how far Travis's delusional state of mind has gone. Even something as passive as the tablet dissolving has dangerous connotations to Travis's mind. Chapman achieves this as the camera gets tighter and tighter on Travis's face and glass. This makes the water feel more dangerous to us as it does to him. Chapman displays what is going on in Travis's head in another way that is featured throughout the film. With the slowing of the frame rate accompanied by panning, we get an idea of what is going on in Travis's head and how he views everyone outside of his world as a threat. One of the most memorable shots of the film is the top down shot. This allows Chapman to display the details within the frame objectively, allowing us to see what is going on everywhere. The camera is placed above the action or exchange, making the objects in them seem diminished or threatened. An interesting note to make following the famous Are You Talking To Me scene is the breaking of both the 180 degree rule and the 360 degree rule in the next scene. Chapman and Scorsese do this to create an unnatural feel to the film. This also reflects Strauss's increasingly unbalanced mind. The repeat edit adds weight to this idea of a mind becoming unstable and cracking under increased pressure until a boiling point. I.e the failed attempt at murder of the politician and the murdering of the pimps. Hey. 
This boiling point is an obvious theme for the next film here by Scorsese and Chapman. Much like Travis in Taxi Driver, Jake LaMotta in Raging Bull ends up alone and isolated, but with a slight difference. Where Travis believes his greatness through falsehoods and not being able to admit to himself his low life status, Jake genuinely had talent in his life. After 10 rounds, Judge Rossi, 8 to 2, LaMotta. Judge Murphy, 7 to 3, LaMotta. LaMotta has won the fight. Despite the success in his professional career, Jake's private life was a nightmare for those around him. Jake is able to find love with Vicky, but it is his nature to strangle and strain any meaningful relationships he has to the point he ends up on his own. Again, like Travis, Jake is the master of his own downfall. His paranoia and jealousy gets the better of him until he has smothered every relationship and friendship he has ever had. The first thing to notice about the camera work is the use of the black and white instead of the full colour. Here Chapman explains the decision. And then when we were going to do Raging Bull, it was back in New York. And now why he asked me rather than last, you know, I don't even remember now, it's so long ago. But I remember that we were going to do it and we were both very excited about it. And then Marty called me up one day and he said, what if we do it in black and white? <laughs> and since I did, since I knew absolutely nothing about black and white, I jumped at the chance and said, sure. because both to Marty and to me and to anybody of a, a certain age, uh, boxing is a black and white sport, you know. Mm -hmm. They used to be on early television, they were the Friday night fights in black and white and all of the famous stills of black and white from, from uh, Life magazine and things like that are all black and white. So it was very much a black and white sport and, and of course the time at which it took place was a, a black and white world as far as visual reporting. So uh, yeah, we jumped, we, I thought it was a wonderful idea it was black and white. Perhaps the most impressive decision considering cinematography was to shoot every fight scene differently so that every fight would feel different. As one fight would be unique to another, it gives a greater sense that Jake is developing and changing as a fighter. In both Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, Michael Chapman and Martin Scorsese created a legacy of images. And just as in this scene where Jake delivers his monologue, we are focused on the Nero in the mirror and nowhere else. Scorsese himself explains. What it made me realize was that there was an intelligence, another kind of intelligence, that was trying to tell a story through where the director, the writer, and the cinematographer, where they were focusing your eyes. You know, whether it was a, the camera may be on an extremely low angle looking up at you. Um, uh, the use of the lens, the size of the lens, and began to understand certain lenses did, did interpreted the story differently. <laughs>